Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In this video, we're going to help a learner out with a question that's been sent in on a couple of videos. This is from Jordan Spencer. Uh, he starts off with a, a nice comment, which modesty forbids me from reading. Uh, but then he says, I have a question in an assignment about a circuit that is out of phase by an angle of something degrees lagging. Now, I'm not going to say what the something is because I've got a feeling this is an actual uh, exam question. I, I seem to recall seeing this somewhere on official documentation. Uh, so we won't uh, solve this using the exact value of uh, lagging angle, uh, but we will go on to answer the question. I'll show you the principle of how to answer this question uh, with a couple of examples. So hopefully that will be then enough for you to, uh, to answer the question that you've been given with the specific value that you have. Uh, so it goes on, it asks me to sketch a waveform with two complete cycles. Do you have any videos that covers this topic? Well, we're about to, so. Um, now, this can get a little bit complicated uh, to answer this question if you're just trying to do it completely out of the blue from scratch. Now, the fact that it says uh, to sketch a waveform suggests to me that you do actually have to draw it by hand. But what I would say at this stage is uh, always check with your uh, teacher, uh, just see what standard they're expecting this to be done to. Uh, what I'm going to show you here is a way of creating kind of like a template that you can use just uh, as a reference to help you to sketch that out if you need to. And the tool that we're going to be using is the excellent uh, desmoose.com, it's pronounced. Uh, I've been corrected on that. Uh, I'll, I think I'll still keep calling it Desmos because uh, Desmoose, I just can't quite get my head around. Uh, but this website's fantastic, um, desmos.com. Uh, it's got this excellent graphing calculator that I use in a lot of my videos. So what I'm going to do is show you how to create this graph in this software, which you can then use to create your sketch. You'll be able to just kind of use it as a reference. So let's get started. We're here on desmos.com. Uh, and if we go to the graphing calculator button here, Clicking that will take us into the software. So uh, this is the, the website that we're using now. Now, just before we get started, I'm just going to get you to change some settings before we go any further, because this is going to uh, throw us off if we don't. So up here where the little spanner is, graph settings, uh, most important thing, first of all, is we're going to change it into degrees because the question is in degrees. So we need to be working in that. So that's right there. Uh, we can leave all the grid and the axis numbers and all that sort of stuff on here. But what we probably will need to change uh, is these values here. So this simply changes the uh, graphing area that you can see. So I'm going to stick with the x-axis. So this is the numbers along the x-axis. At the minute, it's going from minus 10 to 10. So you can see on here, we've got minus 10. And over here, we've got 10. And then on the y-axis, you can see it's at minus 6.768. That's just a random value that it's using to make that square on the, the screen size that I'm using. So we'll change the x-axis, we'll leave that at minus 10 because it creates a nice little buffer on the left hand side of the screen as you'll see in a minute. And then we'll change this uh, to, now I'm going to change this in this case to uh, about 800. Now there's a reason for that that will become clear as the video progresses. I've given you a little bit of a clue as to why I'm doing that already but uh, we'll, uh, we'll put that at 800 for now. Uh, and that's fine, that's all we need to do in there. Uh, so now you can see that the grid is kind of no longer uh, symmetrical along its horizontal and vertical axes, but uh, this is how we want it to look now. So just clicking back on the screen here, we'll get rid of those settings. So we've got that set up the way we want it. Uh, so what we're gonna do is uh, tell the uh, website what graph we want to put on here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say that we want the y value to be equal to the sine, and I'm just typing this onto my calc onto my keyboard here, y equals sine of x like that. And you can see that produces uh, a rather lovely waveform. I might do some other videos on uh, Desmos or Desmos, whatever you want to call it, uh, and how we can actually change this graph with some lovely other variables that we can use. But for the time being, what we're going to do is we're going to put here uh, I'd like this waveform to be a little bit higher. Now I could change my view, so I could go back into settings and change the y-axis from minus two to two, or I can put in a multiplier here. So you can see if I put two times the sine of x, that makes the waveform bigger. Three times the sine of x makes it bigger still. But I think what I'll do in this case, just to avoid confusion, we'll just change those settings on the y-axis now. So we'll change that to, uh, I think, minus two and two. And that gives us a nice sine wave that looks like that. So there you can see we've got one sine wave there. 
So uh, we'll make that one sine wave. Now, I don't know if the question refers to uh, voltages and currents. Uh, if it's got one uh, that it says the current is lagging, uh, then we'd make this one the voltage waveform because it's uh, holding steady. It starts at zero degrees. It's not out of phase. And we'd make the current one uh, the variable one. But what we now need to do is put on a second um, waveform here. So the way that we're going to do that is we go into here and just clicking over on the left there, we'll create a new uh, equation that we can put in. And that equation will be y equals the sine of x. And you'll notice now that our waveform has turned blue. What's actually happened is uh, we've overlaid this new waveform on top of the old waveform. So the red one's still there, it's just underneath it. Now this is where um, Desmos gets quite clever. So what we're going to do now is show you just how uh, clever uh, Desmos can be. So we're going to put in a little bracket here and we're going to say y equals the sine of x plus a and that gives us the option to add this slider here. So clicking that gives us a slider and now if you look at the screen very carefully you can see that it's kind of it looks almost like it's uh, the, the color's gone funny but what's actually happened is that this blue waveform has shifted by one degree you see here a equals one so what this allows us to do now is it allows us to slide this around either way like that so we can make it into a leading waveform we can make it into a lagging waveform just by dragging that across but that's not given us very much in the way of uh, kind of uh, phase angle the phase difference it's it's limited by this minus 10 value here and this plus 10 value here, but we can change that. So we can change that. We can put in there, we can make uh, the value there. Let's go for uh, minus 90, we'll go for, and plus 90. So for uh, our electrical studies, it should never be more than that. And you can see now that we can actually move this a whole heap more. We can move it so it's 90 degrees out of phase, uh, which would obviously be a purely capacitive circuit if this was the, the current here or we could make it into a purely inductive circuit where the current is lagging the voltage. Uh, if you're not sure what I'm talking about by leading and lagging circuits, uh, I've done a few videos on AC theory. Uh, if this is literally completely alien to you, then I would strongly recommend you watch my playlist on AC theory because it is an absolutely fascinating and rewarding area of study in electrical science and uh, hopefully we can shed a bit more light on that. So here you can see uh, the waveforms are in phase, so we've got uh, a value of zero. Now we could just type the value we want in here. So let's say that this is uh, lagging by an angle of, uh, I don't know, 60.5 degrees, something like that. So we put in 60.5, uh, and of course what that's done is it's, it's actually made it into a leading circuit because it's, it's hitting its key points before our reference waveform here. So all we've got to do there is just change that into a negative value uh, and that will push it in the other direction there as you can see. So x minus 60.5 puts it there. Now this isn't the exact value that Jordan asked me about, uh, but as I say, I don't, want to, I don't want to answer the question for you. I'm hopefully equipping you with the tools that you'll need so you'll be able to put your value in here and create whatever the waveform looks like. Now this is the point where it becomes critical that you know what your teacher has asked you to produce uh, to what standard. Uh, I'd want to see uh, vertical and horizontal axes. Uh, I'd want to see some kind of vague numbering system uh, along here along the bottom. Uh, nice and neatly drawn with a ruler uh, and a really half decent attempt at drawing the sine wave with it meeting its kind of key points. So 90 degrees at the peak, 180 degrees at zero um, and so on and so forth so that you've got a, a reasonable grasp of what's going on here. Another critical thing just to watch out for is the fact that this uh, question asks us to do this over two complete cycles. Now what I could do again in the software, I could kind of put a, a bound on this, I could put a limit on it so that it didn't go past in this direction. Uh, but all you've got to do is think, right, there's zero degrees. When it gets to 360 here, it's done one full cycle. And when it gets to 720 here, it's done two full cycles. So I wouldn't draw anything beyond that point there. Anything to the right of that I wouldn't draw and anything to the left of that point there I wouldn't draw either. So you've just got the waveform over two complete cycles as uh, Jordan has asked me in his question. Uh, now the other key thing, because obviously the question says to sketch it, uh, so it's not, it doesn't ask you to plot it perfectly. Uh, so unless your teacher asks you to do that, 
don't worry too much about that. But what I would say uh, is you do need to very clearly label up here the angle that these are out of phase by. So all you need to do is just draw a little vertical line here, a little vertical line here, and then maybe just a, a double-ended arrow joining the two, uh, and then write physically here what the phase angle is. So uh, in our case, it's 60.5 degrees. Uh, in your case, Jordan, it'll be whatever angle uh, you've been asked to, to calculate that to. And it should look something like that. So again, you'll have uh, this value here and this value here. So this is why we set this to 800, so we could see uh, what, what that would look like, just to avoid any major confusion. If I change the values on the x-axis to 0 and 720, like that, that's what the graph will actually look like. So it'll stop at 720 after two full cycles, and it'll start at zero at, uh, uh, before the cycles begin. So that's what we're looking at. So hopefully from that, you'll be able to produce your own graph with your own angle in there, and then you'll be able to mark it up uh, and label it up correctly, uh, as we've seen in this video. So that's what we're looking for. I uh, hope that answers your question. Uh, and as I say, if you don't fully understand what I've been talking about here with lagging and leading waveforms, uh, then please go back and have a look at my AC Theory uh, playlist. Um, it's best not to skip anything uh, because it just helps you to kind of really understand this in depth uh, and not lose any of the key points. It, it can be a little bit difficult if you miss a key point along the way, so I wouldn't skip any of those videos if you really want to understand this subject uh, in a, enough depth to uh, to pass your exams with a, with a bit of understanding uh, rather than passing them just by fluke. So all that remains in this video is to say Thank you very much for watching.